All right, let's uh, dig further into uh, this signing here. We are joined from our Buja studios by Jane Egerton Idehe, who is the managing director of the Nigerian Communications Satellite Limited. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, I guess I wanted to start with the significance of the MOU and the sectors that um, it's going to impact in Nigeria. Okay, so um, I thank you for that question, by the way. And I like the fact that you said the significance of the MOU. I think it's a great way to actually formalize what's already been happening behind the scenes. And like my people say, Igwe BK, or there's unity in strength. So there is definitely unity or there is strength in collaboration. That's what we are trying to do, working with partners that can take us farther or longer along the way. And there are three key themes that MOU underlines. I think one, is scaling broadband access. Uh, we're working on that. There's quite a lot happening in the scenes there. Two is uh, digital governance, so piloting solutions on digital governance, which Denmark is known to be good at or great at, especially when it comes to the EU. And then definitely, thirdly, uh, is talent, remote talent. And not just remote talent working for Danish companies, but talent that can also work directly with those companies. So those are the three key areas that MOU is going to work on. And we are looking forward to it. Fantastic. Um, now, I guess all these three can work in unison. What about technology transfer? Sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, I said all, all three of those can work in unison, right? So the, three men, the three items you mentioned, the uh, technology transfer, I was oh, asking yes, about yes, that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so yes. Can, can you speak to what possible, as far as technology Definitely transfer, work. we can uh, expect with, with this uh, agreement? Yes, but I think beyond technology transfer, I think those three things open up the digital economy even further. So think about broadband access. So be it the work we are talking about in terms of building about 7,000 uh, sites or base stations and in places with no access. So think about just bringing access in places that don't have access. The same thing for satellite connectivity. It means that people in maybe underserved areas can have access to even things like just your banking app that you probably would struggle, they would struggle with, or have access to use digital platform applications they would have loved to use on their mobile devices. And if we talk of in terms of the, uh, the uh, innovation exchange or the, the knowledge exchange, there's great things we are doing. You know, we are one of the first African countries to have our AI strategy. So think about working with other partners that can even help us evolve and scale that. Or what we are doing in terms of digital governance, trying to digitize governance in Nigeria. So those types of solutions. But even beyond that, I love the part about the remote work because there's all this phenomenon about Jackma and all that. But sometimes you can actually look at the signs and use it for your own good. Now think about us. In terms of the, the African continent, we, are the, we have the largest population with the average age being less than 18. So that's just the digital natives, like we call it. And this talent is quite affordable, proficiency in English. So it's just specced directly for remote talent. So we can work with Danish companies that want remote talent. And in terms of multinationals, I think the data shows that about 62% of multinationals or international companies are actually taking remote talent out of Africa. So that's a great way for us to funnel that. We're empowering use, empowering people in the tech sector. So there's quite a lot that could happen just behind the scenes of these three things. Fantastic. Is there um, anything that could limit the impact of the MOU? I guess, I mean, with you being, with Nikon being involved, the ministry, digital economy ministry being involved, I guess that should pave the way um, for, you know, no regulatory hurdles. But is there anything that could possibly limit the impact of this MOU? I think the great thing, like you have mentioned, is that the minister, the Honorable Minister, Dr. Bosu Tijani, is driving this. And once you have leadership at the forefront, it, it tends to take away some of the roadblocks. But of course, it doesn't mean that compliance or regulatory issues don't have to be, you know, 
you know, if they're treating issues like that, they have to be resolved on both sides. And you have to put systems and structures in place. Think about what we are talking about. Even though it's government to government, you're bringing in private sector. Some of the implementation will be done by private sector. If you're talking about remote talent, where do we find the talent? How do we find it at scale? How do we, you know, validate the talent and pass the talent to the right channels? So having the systems and the process to do that is important. I think what we've got is the right ingredient, that we have the willpower. And I really want to mention here that some of this work have actually started you know if you look at the 3mtt which the auto minister has been driving that's the three million uh, technical talent you would realize that denmark had actually invested about 12 million euros into that scheme through the eu so it's just us formalizing some of the work that's already been happening behind the scenes Great. Now, for I mean, if you're in the tech space and you're you know have, have a startup, can you see how uh, a way in which this agreement could boost startup culture for tech uh, entrepreneurs in Nigeria? Definitely, I see a lot of opportunity because I was just going to mirror what we did in the U.S. Uh, we, when we went to the U.S., it was a delegation, you know, both. Um, policy makers, the Honorable Minister, myself and others that went to the U.S. in January to meet with the Chamber of Commerce. And we took quite a lot of our startups. And I think that's what we want to see. We want to see this collaboration stop being transactional and be more a partnership. We are building and growing startups. We can take them to newer markets. And I think that's where the opportunity is, where we can even export our innovations, export our solutions, not where we are only on the receiving end or where we are looking at it from the point of transaction. You know how it is, you know, it's more like a procurement op opportunity. So a foreign company finds an opportunity to sell into this market and we say that as a collaboration. We want it to be a partnership where there's a shared goal. And even when we're doing those transactions, we are acting ourselves, asking ourselves, how do we create impact in the ecosystems? How do we enable people? How do we create jobs? How do we enable our startups to tap into that? Great. Now, uh, just for, for those who, who don't know, can you tell us about the, um, the Nigerian Communications Satellite Limited and, you know, what it does and the impact it's having and, and so on and so forth? Thank you so much, so much, Wutus. I thought you'd never ask. So Nightcomsat, or Nigerian Communication Satellite Limited, is a government-owned satellite communication company, and we provide satellite communication services for different sectors enterprises, consumers, agriculture, military or defense, even telcos, we actually provide services for them. So even to government agencies as well. So that's what we really do. And I think one of the great things about Nightcomsat is that we can provide solutions, sometimes in very unique and complex scenarios, uh, which the normal, what we call standard terrestrial, like you have it, like the mobile or the fiber, cannot provide those solutions. So think about providing connectivity on a ship, connectivity on a plane, connectivity on a moving train, remote access where there is no terrestrial access. That means there's no mobile base station, there is no fiber. We can localize and provide connectivity in that, and that's what we've been doing. All right, great. So, I mean, can you speak to the importance of investing in, you know, the, the, the space economy for Nigeria? I, mean, what I guess launching more satellites into orbit or, or things like that. How, how important is it to, to direct funding and for government to take that sector uh, seriously? So I'll answer it in a simple way and I'll give you a longer answer. So the simple answer is national sovereignty, security, and sustainability. So we know that when it comes to the 21st century, we say data is king, isn't it? So warfare these days is unique. You know, it's a matter of somebody getting hold of your data and mobilizing your drones to take the other direction or destroying your drones, or even bringing down your power grid. So national sovereignty, especially when it comes to data, starts becoming important. Security, when you're working with security agencies like the army, the navy, you know, the police, you, you, want to be, you want to ensure that you're providing secure solutions for them to do their work. But as well as sustainability, we keep talking about bridging the digital divide, having an inclusive economy where even people in remote areas can participate in this digital economy that seems to be driving our own economy. But how do we do that if they don't have access? Access becomes a thing. How can you provide access, especially if you are struggling to use terrestrial? 
And we know in providing access is normally a layered solution. If you look at places they've done it really well, one solution does not solve all. If not, the mobile operators have been here for two decades, but we still have less than 50% broadband penetration in Nigeria. That just shows you that it's, it's a layered solution. Sometimes you're using fiber, sometimes you're using mobile operators or terrestrial solution, and sometimes you have to use satellite. So. If I want to answer that the question in the, in the longer form, I think that is why it's really important that you invest in the space economy. But I could reverse it and say, why not? You know, since we launched our satellite in 2011, 14 other African countries have launched satellites. Just to tell you that, you know, there must be something there. There are 67 launches we've had on the African continent from 18 countries. And the last one being Botswana that launched in March 2025. There must be something in the space economy if people are going for it. And since we've taken the leadership role to be one of the top three African countries that's driving that, I think it's great as a great nation to continue doing that. Fantastic. Uh, Managing Director, we have to have you back. We don't get enough women in technology, and we're really happy to have gotten the chance to talk to you. There's so I much know, going on. Yeah, so I know. You, you, you got to join us again. Thank you so much for your time. Jane uh, Egerton, Idehan, Managing Director of the Nigerian Communications Satellite Limited, Nagos. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.